this training you will know more than enough to create some of these documents as well. Okay, now that we know what is Microsoft Word, let's begin with the actual training. Let's open a Microsoft Word 2010 document. You can open a Microsoft Word document in several ways. We will show you just two ways today. One, using the left button on your mouse, click on the shortcut for the Microsoft Word program on your desktop. That is this button here. If you double click on it with the left button of your mouse, you would have opened Microsoft Word document. Let's close this to explore the second way we will open a Microsoft Word document. Go to the start button, the button to the far left corner of your screen. Scroll up to programs. Come across until you find the Microsoft Office folder and then scroll down to where you see the Microsoft Word 2010 button. Then left click on it once and you would have opened a blank Microsoft Word document. Okay, right now we might be looking at this screen and thinking this looks hard and challenging to learn and use. Don't be afraid. I will show you step by step how easy it is. The first thing I am going to do is to give you a quick overview of the elements you are seeing on this Microsoft Word 2010 page or document before us. Let's start from the top and work ourselves down to the bottom. Let's find out what all these symbols, letters and words you see on the computer screen mean. Then we will go into the actual Microsoft Word commands to create professional documents. This blank Microsoft Word document that we are presently looking at consists of seven major parts. One, the title bar. This is this bar running across the top here. This is known as a title bar. This section on top here is called the title bar. It tells you two things. One, what program you are using. In this case, we are using Microsoft Word. And secondly, the name or title of the document you have opened. In this case, it is the default title document one. Secondly, to the far left of this title bar, we have the quick access toolbar or for short, the QAT bar. This section contains buttons for some of the most common actions used. In this case, we have the saved button, that is this blue square button here, that looks like a this. Then we have the undo typing button. Next to that, we have the redo typing button. After that, there is the print preview and print button. Then we have the create a new document button. To the far right hand corner, we have the minimize and the restore buttons, as well as the close button. Just below the title bar is an element that is called the ribbon. This is located just below the quick access toolbar. Just below the quick access toolbar, we have the ribbon. The ribbon consists of tabs, groups, and commands. These are tabs here that is running from the left right across to the right. We have the File tab, the Home tab, the Insert tab, the Page Layout tab, the References tab, the Mailings tab, the Review tab, and the View tab. Just below the tabs, we have Groups and Commands. These are the groups here. We have the Clipboard group and its commands here, sectionized here. Next to that, we have the Font group and its commands in this section here. After that, we have the paragraph group and its commands located in this section here. After that, we have the styles groups and its commands in this section here. And lastly, we have the editing, the editing group. And these are the commands for the editing group. On the lower right hand corner of some of these groups, you may find a small arrow called the dialog box launcher. That is this tiny arrow here. Not all of the groups have them, but some of the groups have them. In this case, the clipboard group has one. The font group has a small, tiny arrow right to the right hand corner of it. The paragraph group has one as well. And the styles group has one. If you were to click on this arrow, this little tiny arrow, it will launch a dialog box, which provides more options for you. For instance, you will find more features here where you can apply more formatting to your page or paragraphs. So let's click on the small arrow in the paragraph group. This will open up a dialog box which provides more options for you, where you can apply more formatting to your paragraphs if you choose. We will deal in details with the commands found in each of these groups later on. 
Also, you will notice that if you move the pointer of your mouse over any one of these commands or letters, a small dialog box called a screen tip will appear, telling you some info about the command. You would have to wait about two seconds for it to appear though. For instance, if I were to move the pointer of my mouse over this B and wait just about two seconds, you would notice the screen tip telling you what the command is appears in a tiny box on your screen. This is the bold command. Similarly, if I were to carry the pointer of my mouse over to the eye, a little box, a little dialog box will appear on the screen telling you what is the command. This is the italic or italicized command. And you would notice that if I were to carry the mouse over to any other one of these buttons or command, you would notice this a screen tip telling you what each one of these commands are. Fourthly, we have the ruler. That is this, this little rectangle going across the top of your screen. We have the ruler. We have a ruler running from the top of your document and one that is running down to the left hand side of your document. You can hide or show this ruler by clicking on this little button on the right hand side here, located just above the scroll bar. If I were to left click on it once, you would notice the ruler is hidden. It is hidden from above the page as well as from the left hand side of the page. And if I were to left click on this button once again, the ruler reappears. Fifthly, we have the status bar. This bar on the bottom is called the status bar. That is this bar running across here, at the bottom of your document. This is called the status bar. On the left hand side of this bar are a few buttons which tell you what page you are on, the number of words in your document, and it also does a proofing of your document for grammatical errors. It tells you here what page number you are on, how much words is in your document, and here, this little button here, is doing a proofing of your document for grammatical errors. On the right hand side of this bar, you will find the different document views in Microsoft Word 2010. That is on this side. Here, you would find a print layout view, the full screen reading view, the web layout view, the outline view, the draft view, and to the right of that, you will find the zoom slider. That is this slider running across here. Sixthly, the sixth major element we have on each Microsoft Word document is the scroll bar. That is this bar running from the top to the bottom of your document. This is the scroll bar. The scroll bar helps you to move up and down your document easily and quickly. You do this by left clicking the up and down arrows located on the scroll bar. We have here, you have the down arrow, left click on it a couple times, you would notice that the scroll bar is moving down your document. Notice that the scroll bar is allowing you to move down your document. And if you would click on the arrow pointing upwards, that it moves your document upward. Another way you can use your scroll bar is you can position your pointer on the scroll box. This is the scroll box here. Position the pointer of your mouse on the scroll box. Then hold down your left key on your computer mouse and drag the scroll box either up or down in the direction you want to go, like this. Lastly, the seventh major element or component that you have on each Microsoft Word document is called the Backstage View. When you click on this blue tab called the File tab, the top left hand corner of your document, you will find the file, this blue button as titled File. When you click on this blue tab called the file tab, it opens up an area called the backstage view. Let's click on it once. This area contains several more commands which you can use to manage your files. It contains commands such as save, save as, open, close, info, recent, new, print, save and send, help and options. You can also use the options command in backstage view to customize Microsoft Word. Here's how you can come out of the backstage view. You can click on the file tab once again to exit, or you can click the escape button on your keyboard, or you can simply click another tab on the ribbon. You can either click this file tab once again, or click another tab on your document, whether it be the home, insert, or page layout tabs, or press the escape key on your keyboard to exit 
the backstage view. Well, that is it for video one of our Microsoft Word 2010 course.